main event, folks. Time for the main event, as we said. Uh, I'm going to bring up someone who's going to explain what's going to be happening here. Uh, the director of the Atheist Alliance of America. Please oh, give a warm welcome to Mark Gura. So, doesn't it feel like skeptics are an endangered species sometimes? Don't yeah. you feel like an endangered species sometimes? Um, the Atheist Alliance of America has been fighting indoctrination for more than 26 years. And we've been giving away the Richard Dawkins Award for more than 15 years. Some people, even atheists, have told me that our work is done, complete, finished. They say that we shouldn't concentrate on atheism anymore. The, that the consensus is that it's all about politics now. And politics is important, but politics are based on beliefs. And the core problem is that there are still too many people out there who make decisions based on the fact that they think they're in contact with the supreme creator of the universe, right? So as you know, we need more critical thinkers. We need more skeptics, people who don't rely on superstition. Otherwise, our laws will forever be affected by religion and not evidence and science. And this will continue to affect our lives, right? This is why we're promoting atheism, and that's our primary goal. The Atheist Alliance of America differentiates itself by being an incubator for atheists and atheist organizations. We look for people and organizations who have passion and talent, and we support them. We have more than 600 volunteers now, and we run programs that champion people and not beliefs. We also have a program that helps secular Buddhists who are weaning themselves off of religion. We're developing our LGBTQ program. And we're helping the homeless in more than a dozen states. We also work with the main organizations around the world, of course, such as the Center for Inquiry, which includes the Dawkins Foundation and many others. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dawkins. Thank you, Robin Blumner. Where's Robin? Thank you, Barry, Timothy, Yana, all the great people here who helped so much. Thank you so much. People assume that religion is needed because individuals require a community, hope and meaning in life, altruism, and transformative experiences. Atheist Alliance of America maintains committees that provide for these needs as well without requiring religious beliefs. Our community meets online and in person. We provide programs that teach secular meditation techniques and transform lives without faith in the supernatural. We do good for the sake of doing good. And since there's no evidence for an afterlife, we encourage living well in the here and now. Primarily, the Atheist Alliance of America is a startup, an accelerator for talented and passionate individuals. And we're supporting, we're, we're nurturing the next Dr. Dawkins, Stephen Fry. I often wonder what makes a Stephen Fry and a Richard Dawkins so unforgettable. Is it their DNA, their upbringing, a combination of both? Maybe it's the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Cook is one of our board members who couldn't forget him. She called me every day to ask if Stephen Fry had been awarded the Dawkins Award yet. And of course he was, it was a secret at first. But you have to know Kelly. She can barely get out of bed. She can barely eat because she has a very rare genetic condition called mast cell disease. And it's puzzling the medical community, and so they offer almost no resources for Kelly. This is why I urge you to share the link atheistalliancemerica.org forward slash care for Kelly. atheistalliancemerica.org forward slash care for Kelly. Kelly so wanted to be here with us today. Kelly's condition makes her allergic to just about everything, including the sun. She, she literally she can't really go outside. She breaks out in hives. And can you imagine only being able to eat two different foods? That's it. Nothing else. She can't even drink water that's not distilled. She's allergic to regular water. 
But she is not allergic to Stephen Fry. <laughs> Sure, he's a genius writer, comedian, and actor. We all love Black Hatter, Harry Potter, Fever Vendetta, all his work. But I asked Kelly what she liked the most about him. And she said, he's a true Renaissance man. He, he does it all. He's able to meet people with gentleness and humor rather than frustration. And instead, he strives for the positive with grace. And you know what I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking this man has passion and talent, right? I've been talking about passion and talent because you now know Atheist Alliance of America looks for passion and talent, right? So, Mr. Fry, we we do have we do have intern positions open. In the <laughs> now I'm going to ask our executive director. C.W. Brown to come up with the award. What can one say about Stephen Fry? <laughs> the phrase living national treasure, although thought to be of Japanese origin, might have been invented for him. As the adjectives erudite, witty, charming, and gracious could be ostensibly defined simply by pointing to him. <laughs> erudite, witty, and charming speak for themselves. Gracious sprang to my mind yet again when he was invited to contribute the foreword to the Four Horsemen book, which the Richard Dawkins Foundation is about to publish, the transcript of the only meeting between Christopher Hitchens, Dan Bennett, Sam Harris and me. Stephen sprang to the task of writing the foreword with gracious alacrity and turned in a sparkling gem of an essay. I won't recite his life story because you can read it in his two autobiographies, Moab is my wash pot and More Fool Me. As this audience will have instantly recognized, Moab is my wash pot comes from Psalm 60. Moab is my washpot, over Edom will I cast out my shoe. It's the bizarre psalm that my father used to sing at the top of his voice while driving his tractor. <laughs> I strongly recommend both books. When you read them, you might be quite surprised at Stephen's colourful past. As his friend Douglas Adams might have put it, he has an extensive pulver batch. Does everybody know what a pulver batch is? Douglas Adams' book, The Meaning of Lif, coined a whole lot of new words that he felt the English language lacked. There are quite a lot of them. And the Pulver Batch is that biography on the back of a novel where the author is described as having, I don't know, been a bouncer at a nightclub or been a rugby for forward or something like that. These improbable things. Well, Stephen has a very good Pulver Batch. Um, it includes all the things for which he's justly famous, but also have been put in a stretch in prison. And um, he's not proud of having been in prison. He's not even particularly ashamed of having been in prison. He's just a fact about it. He values facts like all of us. It was Douglas Adams who introduced me to Stephen in the first place. Um, they are two of the tallest men I've ever met. <laughs> and I have looked up to them ever since. <laughs> He's so distinguished in all sorts of ways as an actor, as a mimic, as a, as a, just a general charming man, that one forgets he's also a novelist of distinction. And if he wasn't all those other things, you'd think Stephen Fry the novelist, rather than just Stephen Fry the actor and so on. He's a very distinguished novelist. Um, I've read, I think, uh, the two novels, Stephen or the Moor? I've read all four. Uh, four, okay. I've, I've read two, uh, The Liar and Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, for example, is it's a detective story, um, but the crime is not a murder. The crime, as far as it is a crime, is something that might interest Psychon. It's uh, unraveling the truth about an alleged faith healing. So it's a fascinating novel, detective story, about the very topic of this, of this conference. Stephen has the sagacity and the urbanity of Jeeves, and 
He not only played Jeeves so perfectly that nobody else could ever play Jeeves again, he's also the best authority I know on the works of the master P.G. Woodhouse, and I strongly suspect he's going to agree with me that the actual scriptwriter of the Jeeves and Wooster series should be shot. <laughs> As an authority on, on Woodhouse. Um, <coughs> Uh, Stephen was invaluable to me when I was writing my own two parodies of P.G. Woodhouse, in one of which um, Jeeves explained evolution to a somewhat bemused Bertie, um, and Stephen helped me to, 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 to say whether I, I got the style of the master right. Stephen Fry is one of those people, very few people, of whom it can be said that everybody, literally everybody, loves him. The only other person I can think of who qualifies for that accolade is probably David Attenborough. But anyway, that's not really why he's here today. Um, we're honoring him today because of his role in the world of skepticism, atheism, rationalism. It's just about the only real celebrity we've got. <laughs> could forget his magnificent put-down of God on oh. Irish television. <laughs> A splendid broadside which rocked the gentlemanly interviewer back on his heels. I'm going to play a video of it. I, I know you want to burst into spontaneous applause after every sentence, but may I encourage you to hold your applause till the end so you can appreciate the shocked expression on the Irish host's face. <laughs> uh, cue, um, cue the film, please. Suppose what Oscar believed in as he died, in spite of your protestations, suppose it's all true, mm. and you walk up to the pearly gates and you are confronted by God. What will Stephen Fry say to him, her, or it? I will basically, that is the Odyssey, I think, I. I'd say, bone cancer in children? What's that about? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? That's what I'd say. <laughs> I, I, but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. They're wrong. Now, if I died and it was, it was Pluto, Hades, and if it was the 12 Greek gods, then I would have more truck with it, because the Greeks were, they didn't pretend not to be human in their appetites and in their capriciousness and in their unreasonableness. They didn't present themselves as being all seen, all wise, all kind, all beneficent. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac. <laughs> Total totally self. Totally. We have to spend our life on our knees thanking. What kind of God would do that? Yes, the world is very splendid, but it also has in it insects whose whole life cycle is to burrow into the eyes of children and make them blind. They eat outwards from the eyes. Why? Why did you do that to me? <laughs> it is simply not acceptable. <coughs> So, you know, atheism is not just about them not believing there is a, is not believing there's a God, but on the assumption that there is one, what kind of God is he? It's perfectly apparent that he is monstrous, utterly monstrous, and deserves no respect whatsoever. The moment you banish him, your life becomes simpler, purer, cleaner, more worth living, in my opinion. That sure is the longest answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am, of course, enormously honoured that this award has been given in my name. Um, the inscription on the award is a quote from Aristotle. Wit is educated insolence. I didn't choose it. It was chosen by the Atheist Alliance of America, but I suspect that Stephen will be delighted by it. It seems to me to sum up exactly the eloquent put-down, his eloquent put-down 
of the fictional character known as God. And the, the, the award itself, a, 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 a Grecian helmet, pays tribute to Stephen's deep knowledge of classical antiquity. Stephen Fry, thank you for accepting this honor in my name.